Have you ever wondered how you can appreciate the things around you more? Either by observing them, taming them, or just going for a walk? That's what we'll talk about today. Appreciate your surroundings and be grateful for it. And that's when good things happen. Conor McGregor. I always really enjoy looking at other cultures and what they think about happiness, primarily because I, too, feel like I'm in a different culture when it comes to my faith that re-identifies to me what happiness is. It's not what I think I see on TV. It's not what I hear other people talk about either. And I think other cultures of the world can also help us give perspective about how happiness or a content life can be gained through different measures. And the reference that we'll be using today comes from the book by Tim Lopez, PhD, Happiness Found in Translation, A Glossary of Joy from Around the World. And I also did additional research on the internet about how different cultures see happiness. The first one on the culture that we'll talk about has to do with our surroundings. How can our surroundings change the way we look at happiness or how content we are? I always find it a bit interesting. There's a television show where people move to other places in the world and real estate agents help them find the place that they're looking for. And people will talk about, well, they don't appreciate the American lifestyle. It's such a rat race. And they live in Washington, D.C. Where I live more towards the middle of America, we don't have as much of a rat race. We don't have the same problems. We don't have the same feelings that a lot of places in the United States have. These people are moving to other places in the world to find happiness when all they had to do was move into another part of the United States. Not to say that moving to another part of the world isn't exciting, interesting, and valuable. Just saying that I understand that no one culture has a cohesive view about happiness or even how they live their lives. When I travel for work, I see it all the time. I've been to Rodeo Drive, and that place probably had the least to do with my life as possible. I went to New York and found a lot of relatable places there that I really understood, but still very different from where I live. Finding out how people find happiness or contentment or what they find valuable is interesting to me. And of course, where we live affects our worldview, what we see around us. It helps us measure ourselves compared to the other people around us. And so it's always very important in how we think about things. But learning about other places might help us give better insight into exactly what it is that we think we see or how to compare it to what we feel. And so unfortunately, a lot of these words are in other languages that I don't speak. So you'll have to forgive me on some of the words that I maybe don't say quite correctly. But our first word that we're going to talk about today is aprivo. And the word literally means to tame. It means taming our surroundings. It may be that we have a wild backyard and we tame it and turn it into a beautiful garden. That's the concept of the happiness that they find is what can we do in order to make something our own? I remember a long time ago, there was a movie with Julia Roberts and she moved into this ramshackle house that was just destroyed, torn up. No one would ever want to really live there. But she got out her cleaning supplies and new curtains and she made it a beautiful place. That's that concept that we're talking about today. We're really trying to tame something or domesticate something that's wild. But it can also mean making ties with other people that maybe we don't have a relationship with a place or another person and we tame that relationship, make it special to us. People in France find a connection to the world around them. By seeing their surroundings, by seeing the relationships around them, even the buildings and the cityscape and making it their own. The next word, too, is a French word, and it is dépressé. It talks about having a blissful disorientation, which will mean something about being in a completely different place, being in some place that's so new and so unique, you don't even have the grounds to know anything about it. It's that concept about completely enjoying something entirely new, entirely exciting, and something that they just don't see every day. I have to say, I have a lot of this. I love going places that look like places I've never seen before. It's why going to Iceland was so exciting to me. And when you drive around Iceland, it looks so new and unique. 
I didn't know a thing about it. And that was really cool. Same thing when I went to India. It was such a different place to where I live. I was excited to be there. The third word is called Dadiri, and it's an Australian Aboriginal language word. And it means really listening to the natural world around you. I love nature and just drinking in the sounds and the sights. It's one of my favorite places to be at any time. And this concept is really about taking your surroundings in nature and soaking it in, giving it that thought, that reflection, and listening and watching the natural woods. I think that's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful action to take. A lot of times when I see people walking in the woods, including myself sometimes, they're chatting, they're just rushing to get it done with, and they're not taking it in. They're not looking at anything. My friend and I were walking once and we saw this cute frog sitting on a leaf and we were watching him and just staring at him probably for about 20 minutes, taking pictures of him, just sort of taking in his surroundings. He was just so cozy in that leaf. And we noticed that when other people walked by, they never looked side to side, even the kids, to see that there was a frog right there, a beautiful little green frog sitting in a leaf. And it's interesting to me how many times people will walk right by nature without even noticing anything about it. In researching this topic, too, I found all sorts of interesting things. There was a blogger in Chile who decided that every day she was going to take a picture of the nature around her because she was so amazed about what she saw. And it was, in her opinion, something that she had never seen before. And it's true. It's so different. But she posts the pictures. And I looked at them and just thought, wow, they really are amazing. But I even noticed that when I went to Hawaii, my coworker and I tried to go on hikes every weekend that we could or after work if there was time. And we kept just being amazed by it all. And then going to work in the following day, Have you ever been to this place? It's amazing. And half the people who lived in Hawaii had never been to where we were. It wasn't very far away. It was just two or three miles out this direction or two and three miles out that direction because we couldn't go too far because we had to work. But it's frequent that people in their own hometowns will never visit something amazing basically because they're bored with their own hometown. They don't take that extra step to go. Oh, I always heard that museum was good but I never went there. Or I always heard this forest was wonderful, but I never took the time to go there. And I think it's really interesting to give you that ability to appreciate something even in your own backyard. But sometimes it takes going to another part of the world to appreciate that too. One of the neat things that you can do is keep a photo diary so that you take a new picture every day. Something amazing in your world. My friend does that. This morning she got up and took pictures of the snowflakes around her. And sometimes it's just easy to look and say, oh, yeah, another big snowfall. But instead, she goes out there and tries to find the beauty in the snowfall. That's amazing. And it's a good step to just really appreciating the outdoors around you. And maybe if you don't like the outdoors or the area that surrounds you. I know I live in a little bit more of a city than I really care to live in. I wish I lived more in the forest. Still, make it your own by learning about the architecture creating itineraries so that you can walk around, maybe take a historical tour of your town, architecture of your town, or some of the official walking tours they have available to you. Even if you can't get out, try finding a connection with your surroundings near your home, and it'll make you appreciate where you live so much more. And I listed some resources in my show notes to talk about how you can appreciate your surroundings more. One of them talks about how to appreciate architecture. The second is a book that I really love called The Lost Art of Reading Natural Signs. Use outdoor clues to find your way, predict the weather, locate water, track animals, and other forgotten skills by Tristan Gooley. He's wonderful and I love his books. I got interested in this topic when I was in high school and taking Spanish. And the word paseo, which means a walk or it means literally a way, is a big part of the culture in Spanish-speaking cultures. It's true in Latin America and in Spain and in other cultures, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But walking around with purpose makes their lives so much better. The word paseo in Spanish, and it has correlating words in Italian 
and other Romance language means this tradition of savoring your surroundings, walking around, soaking it in, maybe even being a bit aimless about the walk, but just for the pleasure of it. And while I say that there's no purpose in mind, mean that in a destination way. You're not walking to a store. You're not walking to your friend's house. But there is, I think, a purpose to it. And the purpose is social. To meet your neighbors, to talk to people around you, to go get a cup of coffee. But you can also just randomly browse a store window, hop into a movie, or just generally walk around your community and see what you see. It's meant as a way of getting out and being part of the culture. A traditional walk in Spain and other Spanish-speaking nations is that the tradition was boys would walk in one direction and girls would walk in the other direction so that they could all meet up and meet each other and find people they could potentially date. In a lot of cultures, this happens after dinner and just before it turns dark. Sometimes they put on their best clothes and a full set of makeup. I can tell you that during the pandemic, everybody went for a walk, but nobody put on good clothes, did it with the purpose of meeting their neighbors, or spent much time chatting with people. I did have some people come by and say hi and met a lot of new neighbors, but it wasn't specifically for this purpose. I think this is much more social than we give it credit in the United States to do. I think what's interesting, too, is you'll see a lot of times people will talk about street food. There is street food in almost every culture on the planet. And that's because people are walking around. They want to grab a quick meal and something that's going to be yummy and low cost so that they can continue on their walk, but still enjoy the great food around them. And in parts of Spain, they actually have tapas meals, which are those small plate meals for this particular purpose, because people tend to go out and have even a late meal after their walk. This really gives a good opportunity to enjoy your surroundings, enjoy the wonderful people around you, and get some great food. The next word we'll talk about is flaneur, but that's the French word for leisurely strolling around your neighborhood and your surroundings. So it's finding that pleasurable activity, finding a neighbor you don't know too well, and getting to know them. It also means, again, without a particular destination. You're not going out on errands. You're just enjoying a nice walk and seeing what interesting things you're going to find along the way. In the Greek, there's volta or the word corzo, which again is a certain walk during dusk time. And what they say is that everyone in a town just goes for a walk, saunters, strolls up and down, goes to the main streets and gets to meet other people. Same concept in Portugal. And another version of it exists in Jewish communities on the Sabbath. They say that the word volta in the sense means turn up, down, and back again, which means you're just walking all over the place for whatever reason, engaging in whatever activity you want to engage in when you go around. In Japan, there's this concept of forest bathing, Shinri Yoko, which is a restorative, impactful walk in nature. It clears your mind. They say that it's an act of meditation to be in the woods. And there's no word in English that exactly describes its meaning. We can say all these other words that try to describe it, but it's much more than what I'm saying here. But this concept of going for a walk in the woods is important. Some studies have shown that stress levels go down with just a 20-minute walk in nature. And for some people who live in heavy urban areas, can find a tree, a small park. There is nature around you, whether it's a lake, a stream, or a waterway. But somehow just getting 20 minutes of that nature in is so impactful in your life. It reconnects you to thinking, it reduces stress, and it just makes your day so much better. Another concept, which is a verb of ohanami, which means Gathering to a joy and appreciate the cherry blossom. Very specific words. Cherry blossoms only come out at a particular time of year. You can only see them for a short time. But making that chance to go out there and enjoy them when they're there. It's amazing that there's a word dedicated to just that. My friend and I, every year in May, will go out and look at the blooming lilacs, tulip trees, and the magnolias. They all kind of come in at that same time, along with the crab apples. 
and we have an arboretum near us and we make it a point every year to do that. So while it's not the same thing as this Japanese word, I think it gets the spirit of going out, finding something that happens for a very short period of time, particularly in spring, and enjoying that moment. Cherry blossoms are fragile. They fly away eventually. But if we can enjoy them when they're here, it makes all the difference in our year. There's a Swedish concept called Sommeltranstal, but it means that there's a particular berry patch. You go to this very quiet place, like a little mini natural retreat, I think, and you go and maybe you pick berries and you hope they're not poisonous and sit on a blanket and enjoy this little patch of area in the woods. I think it's great. I used to live on a place across the street from Blueberry Hill. My friends and I would go out sit on a log and pick blueberries and eat them right from the plant. And it was our own fresh forest berry patch. We just loved doing that. And we didn't even realize how expensive blueberries are, but we got a chance to go out there and just enjoy eating them fresh from the forest. So my challenge to you is to try every day to go for a small walk, meet your neighbors, make it aimless, and try to find something new in the world around you. Get a better appreciation from the nature, the buildings, and the people around you. Maybe even you'll pick up a date, just like the people in Spanish cultures. But hopefully that'll give you a way of either whether you're at a city location or natural location to appreciate your surroundings, either because it's so new to you that you're excited about it, or because it's a tamed environment because we took something wild and made it our own. And our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from A River Runs Through It with Robert Redford. But when I'm alone in the half-light of the canyon, all existence seems to fade to a being with my soul and memories. And the sounds of the big Blackfoot River and a four-count rhythm and the hope that a fish will rise. Eventually, all things merge into one. And a river runs through it. That's some pretty deep advice. And it's true in life that our rivers converge together to produce something wonderful. I always love this movie. It sets up that ideal of appreciating nature, just like we talked about in the podcast. All right, everyone, thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please remember to subscribe and tell a friend.